Now that we've seen how the internal structure of operators and states can be represented in the strip's representation, it is time to turn to the bigger picture. And by that I mean planning domains and planning problems. Planning domains implicitly define the graph in which we're doing search. Planning problems also define the states from which we're going and to which we want to go. Plans are solutions to planning problems. And we will now define all this formally. Here is a quick overview of the concepts we need to define for classical planning. Most of modern planning can be achieved by simply extending this classical representation. So, in classical planning, the task is to find a solution for a planning problem. So we need to define what is a solution and what is a planning problem. A solution and a planning problem. The planning problem consists essentially of three things, and those are given to the planner to come up with solutions. The first component of a planning problem is the initial state, which is a set of atoms which relate the objects in our planning problem to each other. This is exactly the type of state we've just seen in the strips representation. The next component is the planning domain, and the planning domain consists, in essence, of operators which are described by names, preconditions and effects. And the final component of a planning problem is the goal. Note that the planning domain is essentially a reusable component. We will often see many planning problems that refer to the same domain, but have a different initial state and different goal. But the domain is reusable. Finally, when the planner has solved the planning problem, it will return a solution to that planning problem, which is a plan. Here is how we can define a strip's planning domain. We start with a function-free first-order language L, as we've seen before. A strip's planning domain over this language L is then a restricted state transition system consisting of these components S, A and Gamma, as we've seen before. You may wonder what happened to the set of events that can happen in this state transition system. And that's exactly what we mean by restricted here. In a restricted state transition system, we do not have events. We only have the states S, the actions A, and the state transition function gamma. The set S of possible world states is then defined as the set of all possible strips states. So all sets of ground atoms that you can possibly define are an individual state. The set of actions that we need is then the set of all ground instances of some strips planning operators. And these are the operators that are defined in the planning domain. And finally, we define the state transition function, which is in this case a deterministic function because it maps to exactly one state. Again, this is to do with the restricted state transition system. So the state transition function takes a state S and an action A and maps that to a new state, which is defined by taking all the ground atoms that are true in this state, removing the negative effects of the actions, and adding the positive effects of the actions. That is true for an action that is applicable in the state. If the action is not applicable, then gamma SA is undefined. So there is no resulting state if we try to apply an action that is not applicable. This definition of a state transition function is, of course, what we've seen before for the strips actions defined earlier. Finally, the set S is closed under gamma, which means there are no states that cannot be reached through the state transition function that are in our set S. So, that defines the strip's planning domain, and I hope that none of this came as a surprise to you given what we've seen earlier. Here is an example of a planning domain in the PDDL syntax. The core of the representation are, of course, the planning operators, and that's what we have here on the right. These are the five actions defined, or the five operators defined for the dock worker robot domain. And again, they're called actions in PDDL, but these are operators, as you can see, they're parameterized and have variables, whereas actions would be ground. So we have the move action, the load action, the unload action, the take action, and the put action. That is the complete set of operators defined for the dock worker robot domain. In addition to the operators, the PDDL language allows us to define a few other things, and that's what we've got over here. So we can, for example, say that a domain has a name so that we can refer to this domain in planning problems, as we will see later, by name. Then we can specify requirements, which allows the language to be extensible. Um, we can specify types. These are the five types we've seen earlier. Locations, piles, robots, cranes, and containers. 
Then in this domain specification, we also have one constant defined, which is the palette. This is defined as part of the domain here, as it will occur in every planning problem. And then we have the predicates, which are exactly the predicates we've seen earlier defined for the dog worker robot domain. And you can see the complete set here defined with the types of the arguments. And that is the definition of this domain. If you find this a little hard to read here or want to download it, you can always go to the book website. So this is all based on the automated planning book um, that you see here. And there's a website for this book. And you can see here at the bottom is the PDDL specification of the dog worker robot domain. So if you click this link, you will get a PDDL file, which is almost exactly what you've seen in this slide. And since the URL is a little hard to read, here it is in bigger. So it's HTTP projects last.fr slash planning. If you go to that URL, you get to that website and you will be able to download the PDDL domain.